Hi friends, welcome back to Get Lit. Um, we decided today that we wanted to do some fangirling over one of our favorite authors who is very prolific and very influential and an all around badass. So um, today we're talking about Tamora Pierce and her books. We wanted to start with the first series that she wrote. She writes in like quartets usually. The first quartet she wrote, The Song of the Lioness. It's about a young girl named Alana who go through, goes through the process of becoming a lady knight. And it follows her from age, I think it starts out, she's like nine or 10. And then it ends, she's like in her early 20s um, by the end of this quartet. So I have the, la this is the last one in the series, The Lioness Rampant. Um, so I love Alana because she's, she's very stubborn and fiery and goes after what she wants. Um, and she just never gives up. Like she comes across so many obstacles in her journey to becoming a knight. Um, I feel like this series is, I feel like this series is really, um, kind of the blueprint for a lot of the books that are coming out recently and that are so so popular where you follow a young girl who's fighting against the odds and you know works really hard and achieves victory at the end but what makes these different um not just that they came first but the the way pierce writes um i love the way that she addresses topics like sex and menstruation and friendship like she's so real in her books and she addresses things with such a direct tone that I, so I came to these books later in life. I was, uh, I was only like a few years ago. I was in my twenties um, when I first read them and it was like a breath of fresh air. <laughs> and it was kind of this like aha moment where I was like, oh, this is where everyone is coming from. This is Alana, this heroine is what all these girls seem to be based on. And um, I just really appreciated finding Alana. Uh, so I really enjoyed the love triangle in this series. You not so much. <laughs> <laughs> love triangles, that is the one thing I'm really, uh, mm -mm, no, I will always be like, all right, if, if everybody can get along, everybody can be lovers. Don't choose one, choose both. And it's always like, and if it's not choose both, the choice is always obvious and you just, it gets belabored. It's just triangles, triangles. I'm I'm here for them. I love them. Awful ones, good ones, ridiculous ones. Here for it. This one is not that bad. Um, awful. Think, You're right. I had a little bit of second lead syndrome. Um, <laughs> I did not. <laughs> I did like for one hundred percent. I love Jonathan though. He grows up with her, and he's like. I don't know. He's like her first, and I just, I just like him. He's so shiny and happy. He's not, happy, but he's just a domineering asshole. The older he gets, and I'm not there for that. He is a little bit. He yeah. ends up being not so bad, and he ends up who he with who he needs to end up with. That's true. That's yeah. true. But I do like them together. I like their sparks and their arguments. And I think also part of why our reaction might be different is uh, Alana was my first. Maura Pierce book and I was in fourth or fifth grade and they like Pierce's books really have I think informed a lot of who I am I I tend not to take a lot of bullshit I'm gonna go after what I want and I'm gonna be stubborn about it charming but stubborn um and uh I feel like these books came at a time when that's exactly what I needed and it's also really cool because the way that she writes, she essentially writes from middle grade into YA as the quartets progress. So you end up seeing a very, like the development of the character also is timed well with the development of the kids who are coming to it in the same way that Harry Potter develops. It goes from a younger audience. So 11, the same age Harry is, a lot of us started around that age and just read the whole way through. And as we aged, Harry aged and the writing matured. So that that was really cool. I feel like Pierce handles that process really beautifully. I'm very jealous that you got to go. Yeah. So the second series, 
that she wrote. Um, this is, I think, the fourth one. Um, talks about, well, why don't you describe this one? Because I love this one. Um, it's probably my favorite, but you will also love it. So. I like this one because of the animal aspect. So Dane can, I'm not going to give you spoilers, but Dane can speak with animals. There's a reason that she can speak with animals. And she ends up being really key in terms of the plot for the overarching Tortal universe, in terms of the fact that she figures out how to balance the ethics of requesting that the animals work with the humans in terms of halting crime, essentially, mm -hmm. widespread domination that's trying to happen and, and uh, the creatures help with that whole process. But she goes through this growth experience of figuring out why and how and making sure that she doesn't take advantage. I like that it's got that sort of environmentalist um, concern. And I like that Dane champions that throughout the series. And then when she appears in other series, she's always kind of a, the voice of, um, the voice, just the voice of reason, but the voice of the animals. Um, Which honestly, <laughs> like, animals are, I think in our world, animals are reason. So there you go. Yeah, that's true. Um, I just, I love Dane. I think she's such a fun heroine. She's just a little bit wild, a little bit out there. Um, she goes, she follows her own path. Um, she's not as stubborn as Alana or some of the other heroines. But yeah, her connection with the animals is just beautiful. And everything that I dreamed I could have when I was a, a little girl. <laughs> um, and the romance in this one is great. I really like the romance in this one. I don't, there's no love triangle, so... There's not. And New Mare, it's also said, so I'm fairly certain, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm fairly certain that Pierce's husband is actually a good deal older than her. Um, so New Mare is a good deal older than her. And as someone who has always dated up, <laughs> it's, uh, like looking back on it, it's nice to see that presented in a non-creepy way. Hi, <laughs> this is why you date older men. It's all Tamar Pierce's fault. <laughs> Honestly, like all the good and ill can all be traced back to Tamar Pierce. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, I will say, I think the reason why I'm less attached to the first two, Alana and Dane, are because they don't hold up quite as well as an adult reader. Although Kelsey's going to disagree with me because she's not a fan of the other two. Yeah, no, I'm still, I think they hold up and... I think that they're more fun than the other two, but let's talk about the other two. Before. <laughs> okay. So this third quartet is called Protector of the Small. And it was Calandry um, on her journey to becoming a lady knight. Very different from Alana though, both in the story and in the characters. So this is Eid's favorite. So why don't you talk about, <laughs> talk about Kel? So as Kelsey said, it's, it is still very different from Alana, despite the fact that they are both trying to be lady knights. Alana was going through and she had to pretend to be a boy because it was not acceptable. Um, and Alana, anyone who grew up a tomboy will understand the struggle that Alana goes through where you have to like pretend to be a boy in order to <laughs> belong. Um, whereas Kel, uh, Alana paved the path. She's a generation younger than Alana and is now able to be the first woman openly in hundreds of years in Tortal to go through page training to become a knight and all the things that go with that. But she has a very different growing up experience and she is so stoic and doesn't put up with bullies at all. And it's just, she's so loyal and she's, there for her friends and she will defend them to the death yeah. um, and she also is just like she's just a big old tomboy but she also enjoys being a girl so that was really fun to be like oh you don't have to choose you get to have both mm -hmm. I really appreciated that about her that even while she was keeping up with the boys she worked really hard to make it a point that she was a girl and that she was a lady and uh, yeah She's, she's a badass. 
but I, <laughs> she's just not. The stoic thing is a little bit difficult for me. She's very no nonsense and I like a little nonsense. <laughs> I think also what drew me to Kel is that romance is not what informs her yeah. yeah, which amazing, but also I missed it. Like, I think that makes me a really bad feminist. <laughs> <laughs> romance is a love it's friend. That's nonsense. Yeah. That, like, you can't be a feminist and still be like, <laughs> relationships are the most valuable thing for me. Like, that's, of course, a lot of us, that is the, the primary mode that, like, we prioritize. There's nothing wrong with that. Still, I, I, still feel guilty. I still feel guilty about it. It's, I, it's, it's a good series. I don't think you should. Uh, but that is, I think for me, that was the biggest is that I just got to see a lot of myself in her books in ways that a lot of the other YA don't provide where like it is always about the romance and you make all these sacrifices just for the romance rather than like, Kel is going to sacrifice what she needs to sacrifice to do her job. And she likes having romance around and she likes sex and she's but she's again no nonsense like sex is fun and it feels good so she does it and she finds people that she trusts to have relationships with but they also have their own priorities in their own lives and they live independently and she makes the choices she needs to make for her priorities which is being a knight and being a really good knight at that plus she also has animals and that's really fun and that's just oh her relationship with animals is very different from Dane's, but equally satisfying. It is. It's, and like, I think it's a very, the way that relationships and love are portrayed is very healthy. And I think we need that. I think we need books like this in YA, because I think it's to our detriment if, like you're saying, we're, the romance is the end all be all. However, speaking of no nonsense heroines, <laughs> <laughs> Becca Cooper. <laughs> from the I think it's just the Becca Cooper yeah this one's actually a trilogy Becca is actually Cooper's uh George Cooper the romance for Alana the first series it's his ancestor and she was well he is a crime lord (laughs) she she was one of the best cops in Tortal way back in the day and it follows her process of becoming a cop and and also animals heavily involved mm-hmm. and solving ma- massive crime from a very young age yeah this one is very dark um and violent it has the vibe of like a police procedural you know they're like solving crimes but it has some, it has a lot of the same elements of her other series where it's got a found family this really close group of friends that all support each other um, a strong heroine who's going after what she wants. Um, I just couldn't connect with her. I had a hard time connecting with her as a heroine. I'm not sure why. And honestly, I don't think I've read the last book in the series, Mastiff. I've read the first two. It was a little bit of slow going. And I do want, I'm planning to read the third. I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, I'm wondering if part of the struggle you had to connect with her is the format of the writing. So it's almost more of an epistolary novel than the others, which are that, um, I think they're third person narrative, right? I think so. Uh, keeps a meticulous journal of what she has done every day so that way she can write her reports properly. And yeah. you're actually reading her okay. writing. And I again really liked Becca because she is also no nonsense about her body and about her desires. And she doesn't let other people's desires, like what they want from her, she doesn't mm-hmm. let that like pressure her into making a decision that's wrong for her which again as Kelsey said it's really essential that we have more healthy depictions of romance and relationships and I feel like Becca is a really good example of drawing lines and sticking to them because you have a good reason to stick to them and making sure that people respect that. The most recent heroine that uh, Tiris has written about is Allie. This is Alana and George's daughter. The first one is this trickster's choice. It's a duology. The second one is trickster's queen. And I said Dane was my favorite, but it might actually be Allie (laughs) because she is just this wild combination of her mom and dad where she's got this fierce, fierce intelligence from George. Um, She's just, yeah, she's sneaky. She's a spy. Um, And yet she's got this passion and 
drive to protect from her mother. So she's a super, super fun hero. I just enjoyed her so much. And the romance is so fun. I love New, uh, or not New Mare. What is his name? What? Nawat. Oh my God. Nawat is the most darling in the world. He's the best. I love him so much. And them together is, it's strange. It's like really strange and you don't really see it at first, but when they come together, it is absolutely a fun time. I like that we are exploring more of Tortal in this one. So like I said, she's like the second generation. And I like that we get to hear about Numera and Dane's kids and just how people, like all the other characters from the other series play secondary characters. And so interestingly, um, she came and spoke at one of the schools that I attended and she hated writing Allie. There's a reason there's only two and it's because she could not stand her. Well, why? Uh, I don't know. She couldn't give a good explanation. Or at the time, she either didn't bother or didn't have, couldn't articulate it. But okay. she was, she was okay. ready to be done with her. I'm sad because I would love more Allie. Can you talk more about uh, what it was like meeting? Sure. So she is exactly as no nonsense and blunt as you would imagine, and she is just as into animals as you would imagine. And it, she's this kind of she's really really short and heavy set and does not pull her punches if she thinks you've asked a stupid question she will let you know and also just the way that she responds to questions is that like blunt that blunt characteristic that is a little bit like you're almost like are you being rude do you not want to be here but she's also she is actually there for it. It's just that's how she interacts with the world. And so it's really satisfying to go back and read all of them and hear her voice because she is in there. It's it's a definitely a toned down version of her, like snippets of her rather than her writing herself. She was saying about character creation, they really do kind of tell their own story and she's writing it down is how she, she put it. So before we leave Tortal, the most the most recent book she's put out, Tempests and Slaughter. So this is the beginning of a series about Numer before we meet him. So by the time we meet him in Wild Magic, he's um, how old? He's like in his he's he's grown up and established, and we don't get a ton of backstory on him. So this is his backstory, and I did enjoy this first one. Um, Again, similar elements, a trio of friends that are really close and have each other's backs. It was a little bit of slow going. Um, I wasn't, it didn't suck me in like some of her other books. And he almost didn't quite feel like he was new Mary yet. Like that he's, well, he goes by a ram. It was good. It definitely wasn't my favorite. We'll see where it goes from here. Um, but yeah, that's what she's writing most recently. And there is this Tortal and Other Lands a collection of short stories. I enjoyed, okay, so I enjoyed a few of these, but I didn't enjoy all of them. I loved the one about the lot. I didn't, I don't know why, but I didn't enjoy all of these. What were your thoughts on it? It was a while ago that I read it and it, I remember enjoying it, but it, it hasn't stuck in my head. So I think that says a lot that the others are like, I can just recall, no problem. Pierce also writes a whole nother series set in an entirely different world, not at all connected to Tortal. And that is the Circle of Magic books. This is the, let's see, this is Street Magic. It's the second one in the second quartet, but it follows, you basically, throughout all these books, you're following four characters. Um, I've read all of the first quartet and then I want to say maybe the first one of this, but I just, I wasn't as into these characters in this world. It, it's younger, I think. Maybe it's aimed towards younger readers. I don't know. It's, it's more, it's definitely more middle grade than YA, for sure. And and the whole way through. So even in the way that the you follow, like the, the material matures based on the age of the, the character in the Tortal books, it, doesn't so much do that with those. It, it stays pretty much middle grade, at least from what I remember. Mm -hmm. Tamar Pierce also has contributed to anthologies, mm -hmm. like fantasy YA anthologies. And the one, I don't remember which book it's from. She was a contributor to this one and her contribution was 
a character that learns how to race and fight from watching animals. Ooh. It's really, it's good. I really enjoyed it. I'll have to find it and you'll find it in the description box below. They're a series that we both love and an author that was really influential for you as a young child and who I just loved discovering as an adult. Um, all of these were from the library, but I'm definitely going to start collecting them. Like I said earlier, she's a breath of fresh air and just a good reminder of what YA can be at its very best. Elements of fantasy, love triangles, adventures and quests, but also just... Well, she the way that she writes characters is so layered and rich, and they are not even remotely one-dimensional. They are very much 3D. These are characters that you will live with. They will, they exist very much in, in sort of almost the everyday with how immediately she writes them. Isn't just writing to forward the plot, she's writing to create this world. Her world building is really strong. It absolutely, it is. Um, yeah, there's just, there's so much nuance. I feel like all of these elements are balanced really well. A lot of times I'll read a YA series and I'm like, oh, I really liked romance in that one. Or, oh, I really liked the character developed in that one. But it's rare for a series to have all of those elements perfectly balanced and all of them really strong. I think that's what I love about her characters. And yeah, I think they're classics and I wish that more people knew about them and talked about them. I will also note, I'll push the audiobooks. So the audiobooks for <laughs> the audiobooks for Alana and Dane aren't great but or I didn't particularly like them but the ones for Kel aren't bad and then the ones for Allie and that's a super Allie is amazing Allie was other than Harry Potter audiobooks with Jim Dale the Allie audiobooks were what really sold me on this being a fantastic medium for storytelling. The mm -hmm. narrator is fantastic. She does, everything that she does is so good, but she's the perfect voice and she really brings them to life. So thanks for hanging out with us while we talk about all things Tomorrow Pierce. Um, tell us in the comments if you love Tomorrow Pierce. Uh, maybe you haven't heard of her. Maybe you don't like her. <laughs> Let us know what you think. Um, we want to hear it. And we will be back next time. See ya. Bye.